Good day, everyone. I hope everyone is having an amazing day. Welcome to another episode of New Zealand Salesforce podcast. So today I bought a special guest. You would have listened to him uh, at the beginning of the first podcast. Uh, uh, so his name is uh, Jimmy Heskid. He's a principal technical architect. Um, so what we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about a topic that is, should you be learning uh, Salesforce in 2022? Um, Jimmy is a pretty uh, technical guy, pretty strong on architecture side. I mean, Jimmy and I, I work together. Uh, he's my main go-to guy for architecture-related questions. Say, for instance, if I stuck in a complex architecture problem, Jimmy Heskid is the guy to go to. So, <laughs> so hey, Jimmy, welcome to my show. Eh? Awesome. Thanks, Vickers. Nice to be back. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought, you know, you're the best person to talk about this topic. So, um, you know, we are nearly heading towards 2022, 20, uh, right? I mean, pretty much end of 2021. So did you have a good year, a uh, good year all together? I mean, um, how was your year, year was? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really good. Because, um, it went really fast. I think it's, um, you know, as you probably know, it's, you know, heaps of stuff's been done and, yeah, it's just, shot away very quickly <laughs> yeah I'm looking right. forward to a break man <laughs> oh yeah tell me about it man it's just been a freaking big year but it's all good right i mean the, yeah. the good thing was that you know we, are, we had a lot of work thanks to salesforce and mm. and the kind of demand we'll be seeing in new zealand right it's just mind-blowing right yeah totally yeah. everyone getting into salesforce this is i i personally believe right um uh, that salesforce is at this stage um um, say today is November, right? November 25th, 2021. Yeah. I would say Salesforce is the only technology on this planet which have so much of demand. Even artificial intelligence don't come closer to it. <laughs> I mean, I would put it that. Yeah. There's a lot of, amount of growth. I mean, something the, the Salesforce head has done really well that, you know, every company wants to use Salesforce, right? This is so, yeah. based on that, would you recommend someone to get onto Salesforce in 2022? Yeah, totally. And pretty much for all the reasons you said, right? Like, I think that um, if you're someone that's interested in technology and you want, you know, a platform that's, you know, constantly changing, which means you're, you're always learning, it's always different. Um, there's heaps of scope to constantly be sort of upskilling and learning new stuff. And it's quite exciting with lots of different projects. I think Salesforce is, yeah, the platform to be in. And I guess, like you said, you know, the New Zealand market is absolutely bonkers at the moment. Um, there's, you know, a huge, huge shortage of people. And so if you're willing to learn those real valuable skills, those sort of Salesforce skills and, um, you know, get into trailhead and stuff, then I think you'll be <laughs> snapped up in no time, you know? Yeah, that's right. I mean, one of the one of the questions I often get asked, right? I mean, someone wants to get into Salesforce. They, they look at the platform. And they asked me, can I start as an admin or can I jump into developer first or can I start into architecture? So I often say, uh, hold on the architecture side, that's pretty advanced. Mm. Um, so it's the developer and the admin that always confuses people. Like for instance, right? You know, I came from a developer background, right? So, I mean, I used to think, right? When I first looked at the sales, was, oh, I sh shouldn't be bothered with the admin, right? I should jump into developer, start writing some Apex code. And some, you know, back in the days, it's a visual force, you know. So, uh, so do you recommend that, you know, instead of, you know, going that route directly to the uh, Apex or visual force, let them uh, get on with the admin part first, know the platform first before they get their hands dirty on the code side? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's Salesforce is super important to know when, when to code and when not to code, right? And the only way you'll learn that is by doing those, you know, I guess those sort of like fundamental certifications, which is like your admin, you know, your app builder, you know, they'll teach you all the power of um, the declarative side of Salesforce where, you know, you don't have to write code to do stuff and you can get things done really quickly. Um, but then also knowing like once you learn those tools, then then if you're interested in development, yeah, you sort of learn when you need to code, you know, what scenario. Yeah and what use cases you know need to be met with a custom solution yeah and, that's right that's and right. As, as the platform's growing and evolving i mean those those scenarios and 
and use cases are getting smaller, right? There's the, the configurable side sort of slowly being able to do more and more and more and more um, automation can be done through that. So that's pretty cool to see. That's awesome, man. Talking, talking with automation, right? Um, I mean, many would know that the platform uh, process builder is getting knocked off from the platform. Yes. Uh, yep. And they wanted to people to do more on the flows. Yep. Yeah. yeah so, so that's one of the thing, you know, do you think that these things can say, for instance, the reason why I'm asking, right, says, uh, for instance, someone uh, coming to the Salesforce platform today, uh, they looked at it, they said, oh, I love process builder is pretty awesome you can you know it looks like a flow chart then then they realize oh now this is getting off from the platform so do you think yeah. these things can put people off or it's just like do you do you i mean from from your personal experience right if say for instance if you are someone uh who wants to get into salesforce say from a say from a dotnet technology and do you feel that it can be a bit overwhelming for people to say, oh, so many things Salesforce, you know, putting in, taking off, putting in, taking off, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of like, um, and it can make it a little bit hard if you're a newcomer, is knowing those things that are kind of earmarked to be, you know, um, deprecated in the future, which, which is which is like, you know, workflow rules and process builders, um, you know, they're sort of, you can still use them now, but they are going to be deprecated. I think in 2023, I think they're both yeah. sort of being deprecated in a few different releases. So I think it's, um, it sort of really plays into you. It's important to keep up in the Salesforce space, you know, to kind of keep on learning. And, you know, that's why there's three maintenance or there's depending on what exams you've got, there's multiple maintenance exams you do each year. Um, so you're across all the latest features and what's changing on the platform. And it's important to kind of acknowledge the Salesforce roadmap. You know, they do have a roadmap. They've made yeah. it quite, quite public. Um, you can go on like the idea exchange and you can see stuff that's being considered for um, being implemented in a future product. So, yeah, I think I think if you're um, new, it is good to, to read up a bit on that sort of stuff, especially when you're in like delivery or you're working for an end client that's using Salesforce. Yeah, like super important to know what, what's going to be changing, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's especially even if you're, uh, say, for instance, someone who is coming to Salesforce from an architect perspective, right? And people say so someone mm -hmm. is a, who's been a solution architect, say, on Microsoft CRM or, or say, SAP, right? They, they decide to make a transition uh, to the Salesforce. It's very important, like you said, right, to know what is coming so that they can recommend the, you know, a pretty good solution rather than, you know, what's out there, right? Because, you know, yeah. things might get taken off. Yeah, and also, you know, um, stuff that I've come across before is, you know, sometimes there'll be features that right now you need to custom build that feature, but, you know, in four or five months time or, or even in the year's time, that's coming out as part of the core platform. And so, you know, th then you can kind of make that informed decision, you know, is it worth investing the time and the money into building this this feature that actually I'm going to get for free, you know, in six or 12 months, and that will probably be regularly enhanced and improved upon um, yeah. as Salesforce evolves, you know? Yeah, that's right. That's, I agree with you on that. I mean, we hit, we have a similar problem, right? I mean, where we can't build something fully on LWC, we have to rely on Aura. Yes. So, yeah, so that's kind of one of the things my people might encounter, right? I mean, you know, I yeah. do understand that LWC is pretty amazing, but yeah. not everything you can do using LWC today. So might yeah. have to mix and match, right? Yeah, that's right. Yes. And, and and I guess that's that's where it's quite interesting with some of the older features that get deprecated. Um, you know, it's important to know what the limitations are of the new products as well. Um, and it, oh. I mean, often new Salesforce products, like for example, LWC, I think when it was first released, it couldn't do everything that Aura could do. And and so it was sort of, you know, you could use LWC for certain scenarios, but there were times when you could only do certain things in Aura. And, and I guess as the platform evolves, LWC has become, you know, sort of bigger and better. And, and it's probably, you know, 95 or even, you know, 98% of what you could do in Aura, you can now do in LWC plus, plus yeah. more. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it's, that's why it's so important to be, um, you know, cognizant of the, the Salesforce roadmap and what they're working on. 
Yeah, that's right. I agree with you, Jimmy, on that. I mean, totally a valid point uh, because, you know, I mean, back in the days, right? I mean, when we say, for instance, right, you and I we're both were C Sharp developer at one stage yeah. in the previous life. <laughs> Let's put that way. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I was pretty lazy, to be honest. You know, C Sharp, you know, when they used to release the new roadmap on C Sharp, and I, I didn't pay attention to it because we didn't have that option where you have to get certified, right, to stay yeah. active. So it's just like, you know, come and go, whatever, you know, whatever is there, you just build on top of it. But that's one of the good thing I like about the Salesforce, right? You know, they enforce you to learn things so that people make informed choice about the technologies that are there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think that's 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 super important, right? And and I mean that's that's why the maintenance, I think the maintenance exams are so good, because you kind of get forced to do that quick refresher on all the latest stuff that's been released. Um, so it's sort of yeah. keeping you up with the play of the platform. Right, that's right. And one of the things uh, I've been asked, right, uh, there was a, you know, because I'm a, I'm a member of different user group, right, so I, I do follow uh, people what they ask. So one mm -hmm. of the guy, you know, he asked, right, okay, so I'm a business analyst, right, I wanted to get into Salesforce space, w what do you recommend, right? So, I mean, my first impression was that, you know, you know, if you're a business analyst, right, admin will be a good place to start to understand the platform. And then rest, you can pretty much implement what you learn, right? Yeah. You know, like how to do RFP, RFQ, right? And statement of work is pretty much remains the same, right? Irrespective of technology. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and I guess the good thing is if you're, you know, someone that's got like office experience and business experience, you know, you, there's a lot of the soft skills that you don't have to learn again. It's just learning the technical differences of, you know, changing from whatever technology you're using at the moment to Salesforce. Um, so there's almost a whole element of there that you don't have to go and relearn. You've sort of got those core, you know, business skills and communication skills from um, your previous work experience. So that's definitely a big plus as well. And, and I think now with um, such a big shortage in, in staff here in New Zealand, a lot of companies will be a lot more willing to to take somebody that doesn't necessarily have you know all the salesforce experience or all the salesforce certs and and kind of help you know bring them into this space but just because we are so short of people right um yeah it's important to get keep that sort of the new talent yeah. coming into the the ecosystem yeah that's right i mean again you know that's that's very important right i mean i mean i you know, like you said, right, I mean, the Salesforce is kind of exploding in the New Zealand market. So, you know, what I often recommend people, right, I mean, join a group, a public group, right, for instance, in Wellington, right, uh, we have a user group. So, I mean, if someone who is in, you know, because I, I live in Palmerston, all right, uh, probably you might have something in South Island as well, Jimmy. So I'm just, just, just give me a context, right? I mean, it's good to join the, you know, user group to get to know people, you know, to learn from the experience, you know, if you get stuck, they probably can, you know, advise you on something like that. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and, and you meet, you know, the, the big thing from those sort of things is you get to meet people in the industry. Um, you know, and like a lot of things, I think a lot of industries, you know, just having those networks and meeting people, it's kind of a big part of it too um you know building those relationships so i think the the meetups and the user groups are great for that you know you get people in similar situations and they can kind of you know learn new stuff together and um yeah you get to do the networking side yeah that's that's totally right and and one thing i just wanted to also mention that you know um you know i do see people with lots of certification and that can put someone off Right, you know, someone was asking me, oh, that guy has like 20 Salesforce certification and I just got one. So yeah. so I often tell them, right, don't get overwhelmed. Don't look at what others are doing. It, it's good to know, you know, things, right? It's good to get certified. But if you are super skilled on the platform, right, company will give you an opportunity, right, to to build this stuff, right? And then you can build on your certification over the course of time. Yeah, totally, totally. And, and you know, yeah, there's a lot of people with a lot of experience that, that don't have a lot of certs, you know. It's, yeah. And, yeah. And and the most important thing, right, about in the Salesforce space, which people might be more interested now to hear if they have if they have not been paying attention till now, that salary is too, you know, you can it's like way higher than most of the other technology out there at this stage. Yeah, totally. And and I think it has been for a long time, right? Like I remember when I moved from a C sharp developer to a Salesforce developer. 
yeah, there was definitely a big pay difference going, making the transition. Um, so yeah, in terms of like an industry that's, you know, generally pretty open to like flexi work and all that sort of oh, thing, yeah. flexible around your lifestyle. And then also offering that awesome balance of, you know, salary, you know, generally it pays very well. Um, I, I think it's a great, great industry to be in, right? Very yeah. lucky to be able to work in this space. Yeah, totally right, totally. I mean, no offense to C sharp developer, right? I mean, I, no. I, I still like C sharp. I mean, we some, I mean, I, we sometimes get to work with C sharp developer, right? If you wanted to interface with something else, right, like microservices. Yeah. But I mean, yes, you're right. I mean, the salary part, you know, like for in my case, right? I prefer, you know, flexible working arrangement, right? I mean, I and the Salesforce has given me that opportunity, you know. Um, yeah. So, you know, and plus, you know, it's not that, right, you know, people who are just working remote, right, they won't do the job. They, I mean, some of the best workers, right, I've seen people from other side of the town, right, yeah. other, side, other side of the country, like you're one of the example, right? I mean, yeah, you know, Nelson, right, produced the best salesforce talent, the one <laughs> I'm talking to say. I can't say the same about me from Palmy, but, you know, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing well, man. You're doing very yeah. well. So and yeah, you know. yeah, just yeah, just to be real clear, I don't don't mean to have a dig at C sharp developers. Um, I mean I haven't been a C sharp developer ten years, so it could have changed as well. Um, oh uh, yeah, I've just been <laughs> yeah, it's it's just be should be all right. Uh, so uh, just one thing, uh, you know, uh, do you uh, so well trailer right? Trailer is pretty amazing. Do you see any any challenging aspect of the trailer? Have you noticed something which you said? Uh, I wish Salesforce should have changed a bit of that part. Have you, um, is there anything at all? Or if you, well, if you, if you think none, then it's fine. No, I, I think I think probably the only one that, that jumps to mind is just on the super badges, like um, uh, some of them you, you get like a whole bunch of requirements and it can be like a, it's just a small thing, you know, but it would be nice if you could almost have your own checklist of things that you need to complete to complete the super yeah. badge. And, and kind of yeah. check your own stuff as you're working through it because right. they do take such a long time, right? You get ones that take, you know, 10, 15 hours. Mm. Um, it would be nice if you just had like some automated way where you could keep track of where whereabouts in the super badge or whereabouts, you know, in the trailhead area you are. Um, yeah. That's probably the only one that jumps to mind, to be honest. I, I don't know. What about you, Vickers? Have you got any? <laughs> uh, well, I'll be honest with you, man. I mean, I'm not very big on reading things. So that's one of the reasons why yeah. I built the platform, the Inspirata Solution. I mean, maybe most, of the, most of the people know about it. So I try to help out with people, you know, lazy people like me who don't like to read. <laughs> so to watch the videos, right? I mean, that's one of the reasons why. I mean, I started mostly from a New Zealand perspective to help, you know, people in New Zealand to, you know, get upskilled and feel more comfortable on the Salesforce space so that we have, you know, a biggest talent pool growing in, in inside this country, right? Rather than looking at, I know Australia got, you know, great talent, but you know, why mm -hmm. bother with them, right, <laughs> at this stage? But so um, so that's one of the main reasons why I started uh, the platform so, you know, it can help people. Uh, but apart from that, I just, so I don't have any issues with the trailer. The trailer's pretty cool. You know, that's what got me yeah. started. But I do have a little bit of issues with, um, uh, which is a bit different topic on the certification space. Like you might have noticed, right? Some of the questions, I mean, we, we can't discuss any question in general. I mean, they like for instance, Salesforce wants to remove Visual Force page, right? But they still include a lot of questions in the certification, which yeah. kind of doesn't make much sense to me, right? I mean, they should, that's the only thing I would recommend to Salesforce to improve their, you know, as they're adding more feature, the, the certification to change as well, to get yeah. for the latest changes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think when, yeah, I think there's there's been some examples where I've done exams and yeah, they're features that have been earmarked to be deprecated, but they're still on the, the core exam. And, and yeah, I'm not sure if it's because they're still on the platform and they're still available, but I guess if you're pushing or if, if you want people to really start, you know, yeah, pushing them into those new features, um, yeah, yeah, perhaps, Perhaps it would be better just to take them out of the exam altogether. But hmm. yeah, and, and another another suggestion I have, right? For especially from an admin perspective, right? Admin is pretty 
broad topic. I mean, not sure yeah. if we agree to it or not. Like, yeah. you know, the one of the, the challenges people normally have, right? Salesforce has all, so many clouds, like sales cloud, uh, service cloud, then you have vaccine cloud, then you have industry cloud, right? You have health cloud, you mm. know, education cloud, or, you know, experience cloud, whatever. Yeah. So do you think that, you know, for admin, so they should cover a bit of everything just to give people an idea about what is is it about? Not not in the detail way, just to give a context, right? What yeah. Health Cloud is all about, you know, patient, clinical records, you know, that kind of things. Yeah, I think I think that'd be quite useful way, eh? like to have a, you know, almost like a really short introduction. But I would say that the admin exam is already quite broad, right? Um, yeah, that's right. It covers, I think it pretty much covers everything in the setup menu almost. So, yeah, it's a tricky one. Uh, maybe it needs to be another exam. A new cert, oh. I guess. <laughs> hey, yes, I, I'm just telling Salesforce to make more money. Yay. Well, they should they should pay us the, you know, the, the money about giving them the new ideas. But, but, so but I think it is, I think it is quite a, a good, a good point, right? Like, yeah, it would be good to have, I don't know, some, some way of getting, I, I guess you can, get a broad sense of everything through trailhead but maybe yeah. it's a trail mix or something you know a trail mix yeah. that you do a high level intro to every product or something like that yeah like a salesforce i don't know how to put it a, uh yes sell uh, overall salesforce cert or something right i mean which gives an idea about you know just like i mean you know the the reason why i'm saying to you this uh, this will be useful for sales engineer, right? Who yeah. wanted to promote Salesforce for them? It will be extremely useful, right? Someone say a sales engineer or a, you know, uh, or solution engineer, right? Who's not into technical or functional side comes to Salesforce space, wanted to know what products are out there so they can sell it to the customer, right? If you have a certification in place, right? Salesforce can say, right, this is the certification which covers everything a little bit about every cloud what we have, so you get to know what we are, whatever you know. Uh, products are so that'll yeah. be cool yeah man <laughs> yeah man so i was supposed to be listening right? you should you guys should pay us the money for us <laughs> yeah. yeah that's cool man. i mean it's just like paying back right to the to the uh community so that's one of the reason why i just yeah. put it across well, uh, hey, that's, yeah i've got a question for you vicus yeah um what's 2022 gonna bring with um your like educational platform and stuff Oh yeah, man. Uh, that's a good question, right? So um, I'm gonna finish the the system architect uh, course. Um, mm -hmm. So one uh, the life cycle, the designer one. I'm just gonna release it before uh, December. Um, yeah. I mean, and so then we I want to release the identity one uh, probably by Jan end. Uh, but that being said, right, I'm just making free uh, service cloud one. Then I'm gonna make free CPQ, right? Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, and then I might have you know something. Look at the the marketing cloud, right? Just to just to basic one from a developer perspective, or I just wanted to make something a marketing cloud. Um, and uh, I wanted to uh, bring what's that? Moonsoft as well. Oh, cool, nice. So different, uh, you know. Uh, so these four courses will be free. Uh, but identity and the life cycle one and sharing visibility, those ones won't be free because those are architect one. And I, I mean, it's, it's to be honest, it's fair, right? I mean, I, I only charge 30 bucks, right? It's not big money. Yeah. 30, yeah. 30 New Zealand dollars would be like 20 US and most of the courses are free. And yeah. so I hope, right. You know, people, if they wanted to learn, they can go to my platform and, you know, most of them are free, you know, they can, you know, and if they can reach out to me as well. And one more thing, I have planned since you asked next year, just yes. to um, I'm just gonna release an expression of interest. Uh, I wanted to train one guy from New Zealand, you know, just train him, you know, who don't have any experience in Salesforce. Uh, probably charge minimum fee, right? Uh, from a developer, whatever he wants, right? And for six months, and then reach out to you know some of the contacts to see if I can place that person somewhere. Awesome. Oh, that's yeah. really cool, man. That's, that's awesome. Yes. I wanted to give back, man, to, you know, to our community, you know, to help people in New Zealand to get excited about the Salesforce, right? And yeah. because we have the pool of, you know, amazing talent in this country. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Because uh, thank you for all you do for the Salesforce community, man. That's awesome. And the fact oh. you've got so many courses for free wow. now, right? Like that's, that's really cool for those people. Yeah, man. I just wanted to make education free, man, for most of the people, right? So, that's yeah. the main plan. 
to help out so and why not <laughs> yeah. yeah man so that's pretty much for for my end man if you have any questions you can you can ask or then we're done for today <laughs> no that, that's it for me no thanks for having me on it was a pleasure to talk to you again oh man likewise man is always great and thank you very much man appreciate your time cool thanks Vickers. thanks man bye